Hello and good evening and welcome to the Vicarage. It's Alison Southern here, the team vicar in Melksham Ministry team. It's really good to come together again and to explore where we are and how our world is going today. The sun is shining and it is beautiful this afternoon and yet we know that there is a struggle going on. I actually find it really difficult to use language of war and I'm often very careful about the words I use and yet with the coronavirus situation the words that are being used of battles and frontline and fight actually seem very appropriate for the situation we find ourselves in. The reality is that this is a silent killer and 684 more lives have been lost within the last 24 hours. That's all those people, all the families, all the friends, all the lives that they've touched have been lost and people will struggle. Last night, like many of you, I was on the doorstep of the vicarage cheering and clapping and making a loud noise and giving thanks for all those people who are putting themselves at risk to care for us. The people who work for the NHS in every sphere, from top scientists to those who keep the bins cleared. Everyone who works in supermarkets, delivering the things we need to eat and to sustain ourselves. For the teachers who are providing amazing work for children at home and providing care for the frontline workers' children in schools. Too many to mention people are out there doing their bit and I am very grateful. And as I stood on the doorstep and clapped I was thinking about those people but I was also casting my eye around me to look at my neighbours, those who are closest to me and I started to think about what it means to love your neighbour. We are told in the Bible by Jesus to do just that. In Mark's Gospel, we hear, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. That's a powerful commandment and the very heart of the ministry of Jesus. So how do we love our neighbour? How do we do that in a time of crisis? It's so much bigger than who is stood in the house next door or across the street or in our town or in our nation. This virus is attacking our whole world. And the question of loving our neighbour becomes even more profound, even more important. Whether that's about how we work together in solving the problem of this virus, finding solutions to it, vaccines, testing for all sorts of aspects of this disease. We need to do that as a world, as a global community. And here in Britain, we often lead the way in science and in medicine, and we are blessed with much wisdom and resource. But we need to share and we need to receive from other people. I heard today that the Secretary General of NATO had put out a plea, a cry, to Russia to cease all, all fire on the Ukraine, to stop its aggression. And when we look around the world and we look at all the different pockets of war that are going on, whether it's in Sudan, whether it's in the Middle East, wherever it is happening and there are aggressions going on, the battle against this virus is being diverted, is being prevented, is being made easier for the virus to desolate nations. How do we stop warring with one another? How do we love our neighbours enough to cease fire in a world and change the way we live? I'm not naive. I'm a Christian. I'm not stupid. I know how hard peace is to achieve, not just in our world but in our hearts. How hard it is within our own lives when we are 
living in a society that is often full of judgment, of otherness. Sometimes it feels even by just encouraging us to hate one another for the different colour of our skins, our genders, our sexuality, our disabilities. So many parts of who we are being different from the other makes it easy to dismiss. And when you dismiss someone, you don't care enough to step in and save their lives. Don't care enough to step in and change your life. In this time of lockdown, there will be tensions in our own homes. There may be domestic violence in your own home. There may be aggression amongst your children that goes more than sibling rivalry. There may be fear that brings about behaviour that is not appropriate. Those things are real and they are our reality. The passage I read from Mark where Jesus asks us to love one another, to love our neighbour as ourselves, means that we have to take responsibility for somebody else, just as we would take responsibility for ourselves. We have a glorious sunny afternoon, as I've said, sun streaming in through the vicarage window, and we know it's going to be a beautiful sunny weekend in Britain. We have to make decisions that will have an effect and an impact on others. We need to love our neighbours enough to stay home, not to dash out to buy the stuff for the barbecue and queue in Asda's or Tesco's, wherever we queue. We have to love each other enough to have some space between us. We have to love one another enough to be in this for the long haul. That's the kind of love that Jesus talks about, a love that is about sacrifice of your own self for the care of another. The kind of love that is deep and true and sometimes expensive for each and every one of us. I know that you know this is a struggle and a long haul. And we're trying to find ways to support each other. We're trying to find ways to make really good choices. My hope for this is that when we come out the other side, we'll have learnt how to care for one another. My prayer is that we will have ceased warring, warring in our hearts, warring in our homes, warring in our nation and warring in our world. And when we cease to war because we understand the love of the other, then we can get to work on the real crisis of saving our planet, which is still a crisis that is there in the waiting for us to deal with when this virus has gone and has been flattened and beaten and dealt with, which it will eventually. What we're left with is a world that is still broken and in need of healing beyond words. We will be the respirators that can breathe life back into our planet. And we will do all those things better by what we've learnt about ourselves and each other and how we can work together to love our neighbours. So just as Jesus calls us to do, I invite you to think about the impact your life this weekend, this coronavirus period and this planet-wise experience of living has on you and your neighbours. We will gather on Sunday and we will celebrate Palm Sunday. I invite you to put greenery on your door that will show that life of love and hope that we find in Christ and the Easter story. And next week, from the vicarage table, we will go on a journey through the Stations of the Cross. It's not an easy journey. It's painful. 
It asks us to look at some of the hardest things in our life. And there is one thing about being a Christian that it is not, and that is easy, because you have to ask yourself the hardest questions day by day by day of how you are living, how you are impacting, how you are transforming yourself. So come with me on that journey. It's not soft and fluffy and full of chocolate eggs and bunny rabbits. It's a hard, stony path with a cross on your back. But it leads you into a way of growing closer to Jesus, understanding yourself, understanding your world, understanding God's love for each and every one of us. So join us on Sunday for communion. Bring bread and wine, tea and toast, cake and juice. And join us next week as we walk into Holy Week and journey together, growing deeper in love with one another. Bye for now.